So check it out, dudes. We got f of x equals blah, 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 blah. Um, x minus 2, x plus 3, x minus 3. When is f of x bigger than or equal to 0? Um, here's what we got. We got this right here is what kind of function? Is it a quadratic function? Is it a parabola? Or is it a cubic function where we've got, you know, one of those weird shapey things? What are your thoughts? It looks cubic to me. Yes, because there are three terms. There's If I were to multiply all of this out, so if I were to multiply these first two out, I would have to FOIL that. And then after I FOIL that, I would have to multiply in this thing in there and distribute all of those things. In the end, I would get this x cubed term. Does that make sense to you? I mean, I'm just looking at this and just be like, that's an x cubed, a cubic function. Now, I have a question for you. Is it a standard cubic function like this? Or is it a negative cubic function like that? What are your thoughts? I think it's going to be a positive. I agree with you, Kaylin. The reason why is because when you multiply this x times that x times that x, um, those are all positive terms, and so you're going to have a positive x cubed out in front. Here's a tougher question. What do you think the y-intercept is going to be? All right, here's, here, here, I'll ask you an easier version of it. Do you think the y-intercept is going to be positive or negative for this particular function? Kalen says positive. I agree with Kalen as well. In fact, Kalen says positive 18, and I actually totally agree with what she's saying as well. Because if you were to multiply out the back numbers over here, this would give you negative 2 times positive 3 times negative 3, which gives you negative 2 times positive 3, that's negative 6, times negative 3, which is positive 18. I agree with you. Kaylin, you're on a roll today. Your y-intercept for this particular function is going to be um, positive 18. In fact, is everyone cool with what I'm doing here? Am I making sense, or is this crazy talk to you? If it's crazy talk, what I will do is, hmm, I think that it's worth doing. All right, I'm going to do kind of an aside. What I, what I mean by aside is I'm going to kind of like do some side work just to prove to you that I'm not crazy. Because I keep saying things, Kaylin keeps saying these things, but maybe, maybe you don't understand exactly where this comes from. So what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to put a, a little like, uh, aside, I'm going to write the word aside, and I'm just going to say you don't necessarily need to do this when you solve these problems. This was actually a, a technique, this kind of stuff that I'm talking about is a technique we did back in chapter 5, I think, but um, let me prove to you that what I'm talking about is not crazy, okay? All right. So let's see, x minus 2, x plus 3, x minus 3. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to Foil this out. First outer, inner, last, all of that kind of stuff. I'm going to multiply these two guys together. That becomes x squared, because x first is, you know, first times first. The outers is negative 3x. The inners is positive 3x. And the last is negative 9. This just so happens to be one of those special kinds of functions where if you have an x plus 3, x minus 3, these guys in the middle cancel out. They don't always cancel out, so don't just assume that, all right? Um, this just happens to be one of those special cases where they do cancel out. And so I'm left with x squared minus 9. And I still have my x minus 2 out here, all right? Now, um, let's see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to foil this now. First, outer, inner, last, that kind of stuff. Maybe it'd be better if I actually would do it the other way, but uh, who cares? All right, so um, x times x squared, that's x cubed, minus 9x minus 2x squared plus 18. Now I'm going to write this a little bit prettier. x cubed minus 2x squared minus 9x plus 18. 
The reason why I did that is I just like having my x's go in order from the biggest to the smallest. I have an x cubed, I have an x squared, I've got an x, I've got an 18. I'm happy with that. Are we cool with this? I guess my question is, what, I, I don't really have a good technique, or what I'm telling you is I don't really have a good technique for figuring out what these middle numbers are, but I can tell you one thing. I know of a good technique for figuring out what these end numbers are. Because where did this positive 18 come from? Well, it came from this negative 2 times negative 9. Where did that negative 2 from, or where did that negative 9 come from? Well, that came from the positive 3 times negative 3. It really, this positive, this number at the end came from multiplying out all of these back numbers. Do you guys see? And then where did this x come from? Well, it, this x cubed came from multiplying x times x squared. Where did that x squared come from? That came from multiplying these two guys in the front. So as far as going for these numbers at, on the end caps right here, I can figure that out pretty easily. I just multiply x times x times x, and I'll get x cubed. If this were like 2x, and this were x and x, this would be 2x times x times x, that would be 2x cubed. Does that make sense to you? Am I speaking crazy, or does that make sense? We good? And then for the 18 as well, I multiply all the n numbers. Now, is there a trick for figuring out what goes in the middle? What would, would I have been able to just take a look at it at this and tell you, oh, that's going to be a negative two x squared, and that's going to be a negative nine x? And I'll be honest with you, I'm sure there is some trick. I just don't know it. Nor do I think that it's worth you knowing. So I'm going to say no. There is no good trick, at least. I'm sure there's this. I'm sure that some mathematician can figure it out. In fact, I can figure it out. It would just probably be some kind of weird, complicated formula that I would never want you to memorize. I don't even want you to memorize the, this formula right here. I'm just, I'm just kind of justifying for you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. All right? Now, keep in mind that when I'm solving this problem, I haven't even really started solving the problem yet. All I've been doing is just kind of talking to you about what my thoughts are about this problem. But if we're good with this, can I erase the aside? So, you, the standard form of this thing is apparently x cubed minus, what was it, what was it, uh, 2x squared minus 9x plus 18. And then this is in standard form, which isn't very helpful to anyone at all, to be honest with you. I mean, it will give you your y-intercept, and it will tell you whether it's a positive or negative cubic function, but that's it. The most helpful form I found is if you can get it into this form, you're good to go. So I don't even like this form, to be honest with you. If it's in this form, it tells us where the x-intercepts are. Because it tells us that, that uh, you know how I asked you to find the y-intercepts, you said x equal to zero? Or if you want to find the x-intercepts, you said y, uh, y equal to zero. And if you set this thing equal to zero, that means this thing crosses at x equals positive 2, x equals negative 3, and x equals positive 3. Is everyone cool with how I just pulled out those numbers? 2, 3, negative 3. You understand where I got those from? Yeah, alright. Um, I would argue that this, I would argue that this graph probably looks something like this. And I can tell you exactly where this value is right here. That's 18. That's at y equals 18. We figured out what the y-intercept is. You didn't even need to do that per se, but I mean, we figured it out. Are we cool? So if you ask me the question, if I'm, I'm just taking a look at this graph and you ask me the question, when is f of x bigger than zero, I would say in this region over here and in this region over here.
if your x value is in between negative 3 and positive 2, and your x value is also between 3 and above. Technically, we are done. Technically, I drew the graph, I have the thing, I, I can tell you, hey, this is true. But I think that the safest thing to do, in fact, this technique you'll want to learn because by the time, you'll use this technique when you get calculus. And if any of you guys plan on continuing your math uh, career, then calculus is the next, uh, you know I mean, uh, a good class that you'll want to take. So you'll want to be able to test these regions. It's a simple test, really. All you got to do is you got to figure out, um, what I like to do is I like to choose a test point. What I, what I kind of do when I do this kind of technique is I, I say this. Say I didn't know exactly what the graph looked like. Okay? Say I didn't know that the graph kind of looked like a cubic function that went snaky like that. What I would probably do is I would say, hmm, think of a number line. Do you remember those number lines we learned back in fourth grade? Where they had a zero over here, and a two, and a three, and a negative three over here. Remember those number lines? All right. Think of a number line, and then what I would say is my my interesting points, my critical points, is at two, three, and negative three. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to test regions. I'm going to choose a point that is somewhere in between here and here. And I want to figure out whether or not it's positive or negative. Choose a number, any number, that is bigger than negative 3 but smaller than 2. And tell it to me. Negative 1. Positive 1. That's interesting. You guys chose, like, two great numbers, although you didn't choose my favorite number. My favorite number, zero. There we go. I love plugging in zero because zero is just so easy to work with. Now, all I want to know is I don't even know, need to know the value of it. I just need to know whether it's positive or negative. I don't even care what the value is. So, if I, have, if I plug in zero into here, okay, that would make a negative number because zero minus two is negative, right? If I plug in 0 here, that would make a positive number, because 0 plus 3 is positive. If I plug in 0 over here, that would be another negative number. A negative times a positive times another negative is what kind of number? Positive or negative? It's a positive number. So, I would bet you... Elijah, Kaylin, whoever else, if you chose any number in this region, you will get a positive number in here. In fact, for zero particularly, we already figured out what that positive number is. It's positive 18. But anyway, what I would also do is I would test, so we tested this region over here. We know that any number chosen that is bigger than negative 3 but smaller than 2 is going to give you a positive number for f of x which is a region where you want. So this region is good. We like that. Does that make sense? Are we cool? All right. Choose, let's just test another region because we have four regions to test. We have this one over here. So let's choose a number. Give me any number smaller than negative three. Negative 5. 1.5 is not smaller than negative 3, Kellen, but I think I know where you're going. Well, actually, I have no idea why you chose 1.5. Anyway, negative 5. All right, let's deal, deal with that. Actually, why don't we go negative 10? I just like choosing such extreme numbers that I don't have to think. If I plug in negative 10 over here, negative 10 minus 2, that's a negative number. If I plug in negative 10 over here, that's still a negative number. Negative 10 over here, that's a negative number. What is... Three negatives times each other. Is that a positive or a negative? All right, Elijah, I think you said negative numbers, so it's negative in this region. 
Now, Kaylin, let's get to your spot right here. What is a number that is in between 2 and 3? Because I'm testing out this region over here. This segment right here. Give me a number between 2 and 3. 1.5. 1.5 is not between 2 and 3. Maybe 2 and a half. How's that? 2 and a half. That would be better. Right? 2.5. There we go. All right. So if I plug in 2.5, what is 2.5 minus 2? Is that a positive or a negative number? It's a positive number. Yeah, exactly. 2.5 plus 3, well, that's obviously positive. 2.5 minus 3, what is 2.5 minus 3? That's a negative number. So, what is a positive times a positive times a negative? What kind of number is that going to give you? It's going to give you a negative number. And then let's choose some big number like 10. 10 minus 2, that's a positive number. 10 plus 3, that's a positive number, obviously. 10 minus 3, that's another positive number. What is three positive numbers multiplied by each other? And that fourth region that I have over here is going to be a positive number. All I'm doing is I'm testing out these regions so what I can tell you is guarantee that um, in this, if I were to graph this, in this region of the graph, my y value is negative. In this region of the graph, my y value is positive. And in this region of the graph, my y value is negative, and it goes back to positive right here. If I were to give you the answer in interval notation, I would say that when is f of x bigger than zero? I would say when x, all right, when x is bigger than negative three and smaller than two, and when x is bigger than three. Positive. That would be my, I forgot what this is called. I think this is called interval notation or something like that. And then in set notation, I would say something like, oh, well, that's between negative 3, com comma, 2, parentheses, and 3 to infinity. These say the same thing. Both of these boxes mean the same thing. If I were to ask you, what is it graphically, you would give me this picture right here. Open dot, open dot, open dot. So give it to me in three different ways. Well, here's the interval notation, here's the set notation, here's the picture, the graph. All of these say the same thing. This tells me that x has to be between negative 3, positive 2, and bigger than positive 3. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. It's not and, it's or. That there, there's a big difference there, because how can a number be between negative 3 and positive 2 and bigger than 3? There is no number that I can think of. So what it's saying is x can be between negative 3 and positive 2, or it can be bigger than 3. All of those answers will give you a positive f of x value. Did I just make sense here, or was I talking crazy the whole time? What's your thoughts?